Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes the number four, sale.com, flutesforsale.com. Just be sure to use that code TFC for all those perks. And a little bit of that does go our way. Another sponsor is, well, ourselves. We have a store. If you haven't noticed yet, we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com. We have some shirts and posters and things like that over at Teespring. So you can definitely go there and get some merch posters whatever you like that we have it will be there you probably notice it under our videos if you're interested be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com that helps us out immensely so yeah on with the show hey everybody welcome to the food talk podcast i'm nick and i'm I mean, <clears throat> sorry and i'm Amelia. <laughs> uh, we'll just cut that out <laughs> yeah this is a live podcast uh this Flute Talk podcast, it's a live show that we do every uh, last Sunday of the month. Uh, we do it live here on YouTube. So if you have any questions and comments, join us then or leave comments down below on the video that you're listening to. Or if you're listening to this via podcast, go and find one of those videos of the Flute Talk podcast. Leave your questions. We uh, we try to answer as many as we can. So yeah, this has been uh, July and it's uh, halfway through the year almost. And uh, this month we kind of... Uh, took a time to recharge yeah and be relaxed and approach the new projects that we're gonna be doing for the channel and for uh other gigs too because gigs are now coming back a little bit which is cool you just had a gig yesterday which was cool yeah i had a studio recording it was super yeah. nice i loved it yeah, yeah everyone was social distancing like everyone, everyone it was, a was pretty wearing a mask uh but then when i was playing i was alone in my booth yeah so but the music was fun right you yeah, enjoy it. we had fun. It was fun to play with other musicians live. Yeah, it's like so cool. at the same time and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know interact and having the composer saying like, oh, I'd like it more like this and like that, and then trying to be creative with his music. That was fun. Yeah, and then so yeah, you know, and like just relaxing. It's always important to do other things besides playing music. Obviously, you know, uh, as much as you can. Like even if it's just reading a book or hanging out on your patio or in a, in a, on a park or whatever. You know, it's always good to to kind of relax and stuff like that but um yeah, we kind of took a month of more chilled you totally know, totally went on a little vacation and sure. uh, near, near the sea yep it's always and, fun uh, that was fun yeah. like we all need that we can't just be on 60 through like no. every 24 7 yeah like 24 yeah exactly so now i feel very motivated though to yeah, totally. More exactly. I've been very tired in the spring, and I think that little break that uh, we were forced to take mm -hmm. in a way, like it, it helped me to charge, you know, and I feel uh, really energetic mm -hmm. now. Totally. Yeah, so we'll answer some questions right now. I know there was a, a question you saw right at the beginning that I thought was very interesting, right? About the high notes not being stable. Yeah, someone was asking, uh, saying that their high notes are not stable. Mm hmm. I think I it's Young Vic, sorry. I'm just saying who, who it was. So young I, Vic. Yeah. Wait, yeah, he said, or sh I don't know. My high notes are not stable. I will keep trying and practicing, but I don't know what makes my high note so unstable. Face difficulties in finding the correct weight of the airstream. Yeah. So what happens sometimes is that uh, people play the high notes with the right airspeed and the right support, but... When they get the note, they start to support a bit less, and yeah. then it, it goes on the octave lower. So you exactly. have to keep the same, mm -hmm. um, the same airspeed and the same support. And what happens too is sometimes when you try to do vibrato in the high notes, I notice that a lot of students, because you have to kind of vary the air a little bit yeah. when you do vibrato, it goes like dee wee wee. It changes octave, like it mm -hmm, drops. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn to do your vibrato with keeping this this same air pressure the same support the, the needed support to keep it high yeah so that happens sometimes so i would think it's 
probably uh, that. Yeah. And maybe try to practice um, some harmonics. Oh, yeah. He says it drops and becomes flat. That's what he says. He's saying in the chat right now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So practice harmonics. And also when you get your note, try to remember how it feels. Totally. The support that you're giving. Because sometimes, well, 90% of the time people put too much emphasis on the mouth and it's a lot about the air. Mm -hmm. Like that's important too. Everything's important. But like if you're not supporting the air properly and you're not pushing at the right speed, you're not going to reach the high notes. Yeah. So no matter how perfect your embouchure is it's not gonna work mm -hmm. and usually that's where the problem is because it's uh it's hard work to support mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. a good supporting exercise would be you know um doing long tones and maybe doing diminuendos and doing stuff like that to kind of if it's unstable i wouldn't do a nope. diminuendos yet okay. Because like make right. it stable first. Make it because stable first. Because right. in the high okay. register, it's tough. Mm -hmm. So I would just try to work on that. Like harmonics would be a good exercise. Because when you reach the harmonics, you feel the support. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel it, try to remember it. And when you play in the high register, it's always like that. Mm -hmm. So it's hard work. It's yeah. it's not the belly is working mm -hmm. the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. supporting. Mm -hmm. With time, you don't have to think about it. But I remember mm -hmm. when I. When I felt it, I was like, oh, I have to work that much all sure. the time. Like, be so uh, engaged. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not like uh, you're not doing crunches, but it's still engaged. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I hope this yeah. helps. Like, try it. And yeah, try it and it see works. how it works. Totally. Um, here we got one by uh, Gab. I can't see it, but Gab Ja. How do you know if a flute is good sounding and works good? Because I'm going to buy a flute soon. Um, you should have, I don't know. I always try to find somebody else that can play the flute as well and knows the flute well and, and can come with you or you're yeah. going to go buy a flute and they can give you a second opinion on, because if you're not sure if a flute sounds good or not, or if it's all working, it's yeah, good like to have another person. If you're a beginner, maybe it's good to have someone more advanced yeah. than you to yeah. go with you or. Totally. Yeah. I have a student who wants to, was talking about buying a flute and we were saying like we would do. I teach her online, but we can still do a uh, online, you know, trying mm -hmm. flutes, and I can listen. So uh, you can find ways, you know, to mm -hmm. uh, have help. Mm -hmm. But there's some brands that are pretty stable. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. there's some brands that you won't find a lot of problems right or away. Problems yeah, or as soon as you get it, it's only like Yamaha, and you know, there's a lot of different brands. But I mean, and like. Scenario. There's all types of flutes like that that can really be that reliable. Pretty Jupiter, reliable. yeah, pretty reliable. But try a, a couple of the same model if you can too, because maybe that one model. If you do get a lemon, try another of the same model again. Maybe that one won't be a, lem a lemon or has to be readjusted. Yeah, and sometimes it's mm. not a, just the question of a lemon, but sometimes you just sound better on one flute than another. Yeah, sure. When I bought my flute, mm -hmm. they had three mm -hmm. of the same model, but mm -hmm. I sounded better on that one. Why? Mm -hmm. Who knows? You right. Know? Uh, drawing for fun, this kind of coincides with the, what we're just talking about and um, how long should a flute last uh, like before you buy a new one. So maybe there's a couple little things that people should know. It's like if you buy a beginner flute or let's say the Amazon flute, that is definitely going to be a flute that may be last a year. But then once you buy something like a Yamaha 200 or 300 or 400 series, those flutes can last forever as long as you uh, bring them in for maintenance every couple years if you're only playing a little bit at a time. But if you're playing more, like you should bring into uh, into maintenance check every every year just to make sure that yeah. some pads are not wearing out because not they all pads go unevenly clean the rods and yep all clean all things. the rods and all the mechanisms because the mechanism and everything is all you know there's friction everywhere so things yeah. are rubbing on each other all the and things like that so um and but then yeah at one point when you get better if you really love it maybe you'll feel it's worth spending more and getting either uh, intermediate or professional yeah. level flute but it's not because your flute is not good anymore right. it's just because maybe you've you've um you know you want to have a flute that can respond a bit faster yeah. or things like exactly. that. exactly because not all flutes are built the same but like i people also wor work and have fun with intermediate flutes student flutes i know a lot of jazz musicians played on student flutes in the 70s and 60s you know like flutes that are just 
you know, um, that can last. But they bring them to repair technicians. That's what you have to do. If yeah. you don't, you have to bring them in, get the pads replaced. The pads do wear out unless they're synthetic, but not all flutes are have synthetic pads. And synthetic pads eventually do go bad, but longer. Yeah, it takes yeah. more time. Exactly. Like if the flute uh, is, uh, you know, if there's no leaks, mm -hmm. it should work pretty yeah, well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Pandora wants to know any tips on getting back to playing the flute again. I haven't touched my flute for more than 10 years ever since middle school because of quarantine. I have, I want to start playing my flute again. Well, we have our method, which is at musigy.com. Yeah. And you can uh, be motivated through those 15 lessons to kind of push you. It starts really uh, at the very beginning. At the real beginning. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. Like, no. But because you might have forgotten little things. Yeah. And anyways, like if it's too easy in the beginning, you just go a bit faster. Mm -hmm on those ones but right. i advise to watch them still and yeah. play them just to make sure you get all the information sure yeah and then when you get to the last it's it's pretty uh like it's a good level you mm -hmm. get like two octaves of flute playing and Solid, uh, we're, yeah. we're mm -hmm. working on the follow-up mm -hmm. of this method right exactly now. so um so yeah that could be very helpful yeah. or uh, taking lessons taking lessons with p with the teachers and uh, we off also offer that as well too but i mean yeah you know watch our videos we find out what you like to play when you were in high school like what did you like to play back then so you can kind of get back into there maybe record yourself so you can see if you're not if you have any bad habits, you know, yeah. there's a lot of things to watch out the for. The advantage of lessons is that you get retroaction on right what away, you're yeah. doing. Exactly. And also a teacher can assess your level and give you exercises and pieces that are yeah. for your level. Yeah. But the advantage of the book is that it's pretty cheap for mm -hmm. what you get. And it's already packaged to have uh, something that's... Um, Progressive, progressive yeah totally yeah like the way i would teach someone oh yeah exactly so you would teach a beginner but right you away. don't get the retroaction no so but like you have to use yeah. your mirror and yeah. also your, rec yeah. your recording device yeah. and you can do exactly. a little bit on your own you know yep and, and we you don't yeah. have to take a lesson every week you no that's what i was about to say two lessons a year you can take four lessons because like taking just one sometimes it's difficult to uh make sure that you yeah, we've been. On yeah, you get a few, and then maybe you take a few months to work on that, and you get a few again. Like, yeah, we've definitely all types uh, of ways to organize uh, that. Yeah, we've definitely had plenty of people just take one-off lessons just with you for one hour or whatever. Even buying the book and then having a lesson after doing the whole entire series of that, you know. Well, so you have, more people you have who so take many different things like a that. A bunch of lessons, though. Totally, because as that's just well too. one, you don't. If I say, "Oh, work on this," and then I don't see you after, right. you don't know if you really. Yes, but understood it, like yeah. made it, but yeah. But just to make people feel that they can, you know, it even most most teachers they ask for a lot of lessons up front. We we really start from one to you know four. Oh yeah, yeah. we to offer every type, every of type of uh, any type of combination you want, and you can have them once a month. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I have people who do every week. I right. have people who do every two weeks. I have people who do just a couple, and then they go on their own. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Did we talk about the lipstick thing? No, we didn't. That's a oh, short yeah, question. Someone asked yeah. about. How do you how do you uh, wear a lipstick while playing and not mess up your flute and your lips? Like, okay, mm, so you know. I don't wear lipstick when I play the mm -hmm. flute. Neither do I. Because uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's not comfortable for me. I feel the, you know, it, it makes it more slippery. Sure. And it makes it like I feel it on my lips, mm -hmm. and then I yeah, you don't either. No. <laughs> I wear. Yeah, I wear nothing on my lips mm -hmm. when I play. Mm -hmm. But I wear a lot of um, like a lip seal to uh, hydrate my lips throughout the day. Because okay. I don't want to have like... When my lips are dry, it's not comfortable to play. Mm -hmm. But not when I play. I right. remove it when I play if I still have some. Mm -hmm. I know you don't use anything and your no. lips are never no, dry. Never, no. But mm -hmm. it might depend on the It person. just depends on the person, I think. Um, I had a teacher... Yeah who who used uh, lipstick all the time okay. she wore lipstick she played with lipstick okay and she was used to it so she couldn't even play without lipstick because that's what she was used to mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and she played beautifully sure. but of course there's going to be a little bit of lipstick on your flute of course right i don't think you can uh, escape that mm -hmm. no no it's totally true uh swim chic we have another question, a bunch of good questions, everybody. We're going to try to get through as many as we can. Um, yeah, after playing for a while, my face gets very fatigued, and I start to spit in my flute while I play. Any technique or exercises I can do on or work on or do? Hmm. 
Okay. Um, personally, when I don't play for a while and then I take my flute back, sometimes I have a little bit of pain. Like mm -hmm. it's lactic acid buildup in your muscles. Um, if you get it all the time, it might be that your face is too tensed. Like if it's abnormally painful and it doesn't get better, maybe it's because you're overusing the muscles. Um, maybe you're smiling too much or you're pulling mm -hmm. too much. Um, or maybe you're pushing too hard on your chin and then you have to right. push back. Mm -hmm. That can be different things. So be careful with that to have a neutral position. Um, and also the spitting thing. Um, maybe you're moving your tongue too much. Because mm. if you move your tongue a lot, you're going to salivate. I don't know. I don't know. But like some people make more saliva than mm -hmm. others. Like I, some people have problems with the dry mouth. I very rarely have mm -hmm. that. I have more the spitting problem. <laughs> like there you <laughs> go. So, but maybe there's too much movement happening in your face. Mm. If the muscles get mm. tired and you get too much saliva, I would guess too much movement. So I would practice in front of a mirror and try to find something mm -hmm. stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully that helps. Um, what do we got here? Um, I saw a really, really good one. All of them are really good. Uh, Paolo de Cesar wants to know, uh, although I already play another wind instrument, saxophone, with the flute, it requires a little more breathing and control in the air than the sax. Is this normal? Yep. Totally. Completely normal. And I think somebody else replied to that and said the, the same thing. The flute requires more air than the saxophone yeah. because we, s we lose a lot of Yeah, air. a lot of air is lost through transmission. Like, like through a part is going inside, but yeah. a part is just going outside. Yeah, the just going nowhere. Normal. Yeah, yes, yeah, totally. So you need more air. Mm -hmm. um, how do you play the flute without the breathing sound? Okay, well, yeah. Like the air. Like air the sound, yeah, probably like the shush sound, yeah. So I think eventually it comes to the question of balance between airiness and no airiness, like a turbo sound, which is just like all tone. And like the tone is kind of like masking the air. The air is still there. It's just you can't hear because there's so much other sound being put over it. And also, like if you're far away, like say you're in a hall, like you're on stage and the person at the end of the hall will not hear your air sound. They'll hear tone because the tone is traveling faster than the air will. And the air is going to just drop off eventually. Yeah. But there's like good air and bad yes. air in, in the Absolutely sound. Absolutely right. There's just lack of, of focus and psh, yeah. you know, and almost no sound. And then there's a sound that projects well that has just a little bit of airiness in it that also is part of it and makes it able to travel. Mm -hmm. If you're looking t for a sound that is too pure, it's going to be thin and it's not going to it's not going to project. Mm -hmm. But if you only have like shh that's not interesting mm -hmm, either. Mm -hmm. Usually when that happens is that it's not focused enough on the embouchure plate. So you have to figure out where to send the air mm -hmm. and, you know, not send it in an open V, but mm -hmm. in a closed V right. towards that point, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, yeah. hopefully it helps. Um, Paige wants to know, my wrists tend to hurt after playing for a while. Is there a reason for that? And how can I fix it? There can be many reasons. Mm, yeah. You might... Yep. raise your elbows what you i might be see doing the 90 most degrees. is that yeah. <laughs> people take their flute and instead of keeping their elbows low mm -hmm. they bring their elbows mm -hmm. high yeah it looks kind of cute i have to admit but it doesn't and if you emphasize on the work. left hand the thumb thing usually goes under and so it curves yeah even and more. then sometimes people put their thumb under the flute instead of they want to show like all yeah. that stuff maybe <laughs> so here here we go but some people are listening, so I'll try to explain it. Yeah. Some people make a hook with their thumb and they put it under the flute mm -hmm. like that. I see that. And then the hand must be so tense mm -hmm. to hold mm -hmm. the flute like that. Mm -hmm. Plus the, the rods make the flute want to flip on the back, you know, towards us. So yeah. uh, the thumb has to be behind the flute pushing forward instead of under. But you can also use the thumb port. That's pretty good. It's like a little shelf that helps you uh, just... Um, hold your flute so that's good mm -hmm. and um yeah if if your wrists hurt i would say that you're probably lifting your elbows too high mm -hmm. and you just need to bring your elbows closer to your body make sure that you know your joints are not pushed to their extreme so your wrist should not go to a 90 degree angle at all it should stay in a 
you know, it should stay closer to 180 uh, a straight line. But mm -hmm. it can be like it can be going to a slight angle, but not too much because obviously you're gonna hurt mm -hmm. yourself. Exactly. Our body's not meant to be in in these types of postures for long, especially holding a flute mm -hmm. and moving your fingers fast at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So check our videos about posture, maybe, yep. and also posture video. Look at yourself in the mirror. Make sure that everything's in line. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, there's a question there in French. Maybe you want to read that to yourself, and I'll read another question while that's happening. Um, what do we got here? I saw some really good ones. Again, like, uh, these are some great questions. Leave some uh, more for us if you want. Uh, Kelvin wants to know, I believe that I'm ready to take plugs out of my keys. Can you suggest how I should go about accomplishing this? Okay, yeah. So order. when you remove plugs, remove the the fingers that are closer to the thumb first mm -hmm. and the fingers that are closer to the pinky last, you know. Okay. Inside out. Inside out. Okay. So let's say for the um, G F right hand, I would remove -E. the the index yeah, finger F. first, mm -hmm. then the middle finger, then the Right. Yeah. Okay. And some people even keep the the ring finger forever. Yeah, forever, you know? yep. And same thing with the other hand. Yep. Totally. So always like towards mm -hmm. Start with the thumbs, like the thumbs don't have it, no, but you understand but what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The other question was about in the summer when you sweat and the flute. Yeah, summer sweat. Yeah, that's what I thought. The flute falls. Um, what do you do? Uh, I know a lot of people put, um, like, a I stand? know Yamaha puts, Yamaha has a thing that's actually like a little kit you can get at a music shop that you can put it on a lip plate and it's like a little grip, but it's paper. It's like, sticky paper some people put stamps like uh post postage stamps and they wrap it around there and it does that i know there's some head joint makers that make the lip plate um oh yeah they make a little not even that i think yeah little ridges but also uh, not even just the ridges they ele they ex elevate from the back the plate so that it actually can curve into the chin and hold there no matter what so it never oh, slips okay. like mine does that and I don't have that problem mm -hmm. usually, but um, my first flute teacher, he had that problem when he did his um, last, you know, the concours at the conservatory. Sure. It was very warm and it was slipping. He still had first price, but mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. very stressed about mm -hmm. that. And then he started putting a little um, gas, like mm -hmm. a little... It's a medical yeah, thing. medical tape, yeah, gauze. Medical yeah. tape. Medical and gauze, like sticky gauze. He would just stick it there and... Cut it to the contour of the lip plate and just do it. Yeah, yep. and he loved it, and it gave him a little bit more edge because mm -hmm. he was a bit further from mm -hmm. the plate, and mm -hmm. he loved it, and he kept it like that. Mm -hmm. He even added more layers to, give to get a bigger sound, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. Uh, GBK Games, GBK Games wants to know how to be, how do you be more motivated to practice? I know, like, you know, there's different ways to practice. I know sometimes if you're just practicing things that are like kind of tedious and like you just have to get it right or just get to learn it, you know, like sometimes I listen to podcasts while I play sometimes because I can do both. I can because if it's just a technical thing, I'm just I'm just doing the technical thing. Like I know the sound's always going to be good each time. Yeah, if I practice like scales that. that I've been practicing for mm -hmm. 27 years, I can watch a show. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. I shouldn't be doing that, I guess. But it's Netflix and practice. Why yeah. not? Why not? It's all good. But also, I don't put something that I'm going to be very... Attentive to. Attentive Just to. background noise. Some, yeah. But also, um, having goals. Yeah. Like, if goals. you take lessons yeah, totally. and you, you have a teacher saying, practice this for next mm -hmm. time, and then you'll be like, oh, I have my lesson. So sure. you'll be motivated to practice for that. Or if you have... Uh, some people make Zoom concerts. Yep. or It's so coming in a lot you can now. have... Like, people could make a group mm -hmm. with our with our community and be sure. like let's make a zoom yeah. thing yeah totally uh, this time yeah and uh, maybe that would be an idea yeah we have we a discord that we're we have a discord i have to take out that give that information out for people but we have a discord and we have a, a reddit as well sign up and be like yeah part of the part of a like a yeah like a community concert thing that'd be cool that'd yeah. be fun and then you can let us know if you'd like that a little, a little um opportunity like yeah goal oh, yeah. i'll learn this piece i'll mm -hmm. play it for that thing it's so true just for, yeah, fun, just for fun just for you know that could be like those types of things because mm -hmm. it's sometimes just practicing for the love of music it's beautiful mm -hmm. 
but for some people it's enough i have students that never want to participate mm -hmm. in the concerts and and they've been playing for 20 25 years some of them you know but mm -hmm. and they still love music as much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all good, but some people also need to have those out exterior motivators, and it's fine too. Mm. Uh, Flu Rhapsody wants to know, dear Emily, I want to ask you: Did you ever wish to get into the Berlin Philharmonic, or did you ever try it? And also, can you tell us your best and worst audition experiences? Thank you. Okay. Well, why not play in it if you can? If you had the opportunity, like, why not? <laughs> Do you yeah. ever wish? Sure. I think every flutist wishes that they could play in an orchestra that good, you know, like the top of the top. I used to wish to play in a big orchestra. Okay. Yeah. But now your audition experiences? Like what was your best but and worst? I never auditioned for a big orchestra mm -hmm. like that because when I finished my master's degree, there was no opening around yeah, where in I... In your area. Uh, in, a, in a, you know... Region. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could have went a bit further, but like there was a limit to my uh, means. And so there was only small orchestras that were opening uh, mm -hmm. posts. And I, uh, yeah, so auditions, well, the auditions that I won were my best ones, obviously. Uh, the worst ones. Um, I can say I, all of them for me were just all learning experiences. I wouldn't say all of them, were, none of them were bad, like it just everybody's good when they play there and a lot of those players in line they're all yeah. as good as you are so it's just like you know we're all yeah. we're all at a level that like when i auditioned for professional orchestras i was like we could all do that job yeah everyone here sure was able to do mm -hmm. that job then it's just a question of little things mm -hmm. like and sometimes i have to admit in my experience there has been even if there is a screen people knew who was behind the screen sure and um, that's that that was yeah. my worst experience uh -huh. because when you practice a lot and you get there and then you realize they already knew who they wanted uh -huh. and it's very obvious that it uh -huh. was rigged you're like wow i invested all that time and energy for nothing and uh -huh. that's when i stopped doing auditions uh -huh when that was my worst experience not because i didn't play well but because i realized this orchestra had rigged the process mm -hmm. and then i decided to put my energy elsewhere because mm -hmm. i was like i'm putting so much energy in something that i don't control at all sure and um but i could have continued and probably i would have gotten something but i chose to do something else mm -hmm. plus yeah. i i like to play chamber music and uh to play uh, pop music. soloist and play pop and play all types of mm -hmm. things. I'm not sure I would have been this happy playing in an orchestra mm -hmm. for like 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Laszlo. Hopefully that answers your question, Flute Rhapsody. I think she lives in Berlin. He or she lives in Berlin, so that's oh kind yeah. of probably why. I'm not sure, though. Let us know. Uh, how do you, how Daniel wants to know how to maintain, how do you maintain long st sessions of studying or practicing, in my case, Typically, my sound becomes very bad after 30 or 40 minutes. Well, maybe that's the point in time you take a little break and then come back after, I think. Exactly. Like that, yeah. And also, some people tell me, and as a beginner, I was experiencing that. After a while, if my flute had too much condensation in it, I didn't sound so good. Then I would just, you know, clean it up, mm -hmm. ins just the inside, and then I would sound better. So maybe, you know... Put your flute away, go for a, a glass of water, walk a little bit, like you said, and come mm -hmm, back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you're just getting, like, I don't think it's good to practice more than 45 to 50 minutes in a row anyways. Mm -hmm. After that much, you should take a 10-minute break and come back. Mm -hmm. Like a break and also be listening to your, uh, to a couple of versions of your mm -hmm. piece. It can mm -hmm. be all types. You don't have, practicing is not just having your flute up. Right. Exactly. You can be studying the piece. You can be like, oh, where am I going to breathe? Oh, where this phrase ends? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, can be mm -hmm. analyzing the piece and understanding what what was the composer trying to say here? Like, where exactly? How are the phrases um, separated, and how are the you know all mm -hmm, those things, mm -hmm. and what motives come back? Oh, mm -hmm. here it's the same thing as there, and you can use time doing that. Mm -hmm. So we'll answer a couple more questions, but before we do that, we just want to mention that uh, we do this again every 
every last, last Sunday, uh, Sunday of the month. And uh, you can help support us either through Super Chats Live here on YouTube or you can go on Patreon and tip us every month. Uh, that goes a, a long way as well. Or go and uh, if you're a beginner flutist and you're here listening to us, uh, go and check out the Musogy.com, M-O-U-S-O-G-Y.com. That's where all of our courses are, online courses, uh, digital courses courses uh, that prepackage for you to um, progressively learn and we're always adding new stuff and there's um, we're continuing our sales still there so you can definitely get um, some good value there so uh, musicg.com also if you want to have lessons with Emily you can email us at info at the flute so info at the flute so all of those are all the ways and also uh, if you want to buy merch like our scale um, poster and stuff like that uh, you can go to our um, store.theflutechannel.com and that's where our Teespring store is where you can buy all of our merch back here and like you said the poster and all that stuff so uh, the, all those things go a long way uh, I don't think I missed anything else but uh, uh, yeah our code with the Flute Center of New York of course yeah at the, at the beginning of the show we have if you're looking for a flute as well um, uh, Flute Center of New York has the largest selection of flutes and uh, they're very very uh informative they're all flutists there you can either go on flutes for sale the number four uh, dot com so flutes for sale dot com and uh, put our code tfc and you get a bunch of perks like uh, being able to try the flute try three to four flutes up to 10 days anywhere in the world um there's also extended warranty and little perks like that yeah and it helps us out yeah so we definitely just thanks be transparent to everyone who uh who use our code yeah, thank you so yeah. much a lot of we people really use appreciate it appreciate it really appreciates it goes directly to us here in producing more um, great content for you guys, and, and also uh, we have a Patreon for those who want yeah, to mention uh, that. support totally. us. Totally, yeah. yeah, you can oh tip yeah, us. Yeah, this is all good. It's always <laughs> mentioned it twice. So yeah, yeah let's uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah. let's answer a couple. And more, also yeah. on our on our uh, store, we have uh, my transcription of um, of Paganini yeah. of the twenty fourth Caprice, and maybe if people have ideas of other things they would like me to either transcribe mm -hmm. or make my own. Uh, version with let's say my yeah. breathing marks and all other arrangements things. and stuff sure yeah maybe you can leave it in the comments and i it might uh, inspire me totally totally um yeah uh, so i saw a couple of good questions here which school flute rapidly again has a great question flute school which school would you recommend to be a good flutist i know it depends on the person but i think a good school changes a lot it changes a lot of things well there's a lot of music schools on the planet oh yeah there's also conservatories, a lot of those on the planet. And like in Europe, they favor conservatories uh, sometimes. Well, in Europe, like I and know that in France, you can't learn performance in university. It's only in conservatories. So there you go. In university, they teach uh, music history and stuff like that, but not, not uh, sure. only conservatories teach playing. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, and in the United States, there's almost one in every state and most of them are pretty good. Like I've the people I've met that I've always thought were very extraordinary musicians or let's say flutists. Some of them come from schools I never even heard of before. You know, it's so it depends. And yeah, that's it, it depends you know? on your needs, yeah. your personality. What type of environment is uh, the most suited to um, make you bloom? Sure. You know, like I did my bachelor's degree in a university that was more renowned than the university I chose for my master's. But I thought the university where I did my bachelor's sometimes was a bit closed. Like you couldn't explore as much. You had to do things was a bit more traditional. Mm -hmm. And then also it's a lot about the teacher, not the university. Mm -hmm. It's really, wi and then when I did my master's, I had more more opportunities because it was a smaller university. I was able to play a concerto with the orchestra. I was able to compose a piece for mm -hmm. my my, my uh, recitals. I was like things that they wouldn't have allowed me to do mm -hmm. and uh, helped me to grow as a musician mm -hmm. and as an artist. I was able to uh, use dancers in one of my recitals. like, And that was good for me. And so, yeah. And it's a lot about the f your flute teacher as mm -hmm. well. Also, she wanted to know, or here she, sorry, uh, when did you start playing the flute? Well, well a while ago. You a started uh, ago. like 11 years yeah, old? Yeah, 11. So, so a long time. Yeah. There you go. Hopefully it answers. Um, Mark Grito, Mark Gaddy, he wants to know, how do you get the turbo sound that it has absolutely no air with lots of brilliance? I have an offset on bajour and I use too much air. Also, what Brannon do you play on? Thank you. I love your videos. You don't play on a Brannon. You play on a Sanko, eh? 
yeah I'm pretty I much that great, but you have you. played on you have played a brandon in our, one of our videos i think i think two yeah. of our videos you've been testing but yeah you have a sankoi flute yeah yeah so thank, thank you, you. uh artist with the wimberly head joint wimberly is not part of sankoi it's actually wimberly meaning another another head joint maker yeah that makes mm. head joints for all flutes because uh, how to fit them you yeah know, yeah it's a um, handmade head yeah. joint so um you have you want to get a sound that's less airy if i understand correctly and but still be turbo you have mm -hmm. you have a embouchure that's uh, on the oh you're not in the middle you're not center yeah it's off i don't think that the that matters the center thing no um well well maybe he likes the turbo sound that's uh i always find that that turbo sound has only a certain range of a palette that's only so large um once you start going on the opposite side of the spectrum of that type of turbo sound, you get another shade of multiple colors, like less turbo, so more airy, and then middle and back and forth, you know, like, um, because turbo is really not a, a tone. It's a character more, I think. Yeah. Like you're saying, mm -hmm. um, maybe we shouldn't aim for one sound, mm -hmm. the turbo sound all the time. Right. And we should aim to have a palette of colors. Mm -hmm. That we can use like a painter and be like, oh, I'm going to put a little bit of blue here and a little bit of yellow yeah. there. And so it's more interesting than playing a whole piece with one sound. And it's really special just to you, I guess. So like I always tr like try to think like turbo sound, what's the opposite of that? And can I achieve that? And why is that is that useful or how is it useful? Is it useful in, in, in Baroque music? Is it useful in that? Like really explore um, methodically about those types of things and like reverse engineer and go backwards and forwards with your tone. Um, but it's not the end ends of, and it's not the ends, you know, it's not the end of the th end of your tone production. There's so much you can do in that tube, you know, like it's, it's uh, interesting. So hopefully that helps. I don't know. That's a little seed to kind of get you going. Um, but offset, I'm sure I've met so many people that play, uh, I know Denis Berurkunagav or whatever, he plays with an offset thing, with an offset embouchure. I think even William Bennett does too. Yeah, it's so not a big deal. That's not Yeah, uh, that's not a big deal. If you're using too much air, maybe you're not focusing the air on the embouchure plate properly. Maybe you're just sending too much air all over mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, you need mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. have your air stream more focused on one spot. That could be helpful. Yeah. And then maybe you're putting too much air outside of the flute. It's okay. You so have to put okay. a little bit outside, but yeah, you know, y but um, it's tough without seeing you, but it might be that. Yeah, it might be that. Uh, how many hours, this is kind of an interesting question. How many hours do you have to practice to get into a professional orchestra? Uh, contrary to the whole hours thing, like 10,000 hour rule or you know 40 hours a day type of thing and all those types of things you know because those are the two sides again it's the two sides of the spectrum there's the malcolm gladwell 10,000 hours and then there's 40 hours ling -ling. But like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a malcolm gladwell that much yeah, i know I about know. that 10,000 where did he get that did uh, he do a study I, did, I don't or know. he just picked that out of a of a cloud and 10, he put it on a book hours. and he put it in a book but, but i think it, it's uh i don't know to but me i would have to read about it but to me it sounds like a number that oh it's 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 it's, it's marketing you know it's, it's really yeah, all those types of things and then it became part of yeah like obviously if you want to get good at something you have to yeah. do it a lot it's really a coincidence that it's ten thousand hours you'll achieve mastery like i believe that 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 type of formula applied in the arts and creative fields doesn't work with everyone at all like it doesn't well, just doesn't if you're playing an instrument you have to create a lot of um automaticisms right. mm -hmm. so you need you need repetition totally and also you need time because your brain can't just that's the formula make those yeah those connections yeah. In, a, in a day even yeah. if you practice five hours yeah. your brain needs rest yeah. to make the connections yeah. and during sleep the brain does a lot of work see that's the type of study you, you want to see so uh, you need repetition and you need not only repetition in one day but throughout many mm -hmm, days mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if you want to get better at something like some people get very impatient i don't think that's the right mindset because yeah. you need to give your body time like right. your lungs exactly. won't be able to play a whole minute of flute yeah. in a week no. they need time to develop so you need time totally. to learn to breathe that way and to blow that way and all that stuff mm -hmm. your heart your lungs all those things and also your brain has to make those loops of sure 
fingerings yeah. and your fingers moving in a certain sequence and mm -hmm. all those things. So, mm -hmm. and also it's about how you practice because if you practice in a mindless way or if you practice in a very focused mm -hmm. way, it's not going to give you the same results. Mm -hmm. But you do need repetition. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing my bachelor's, I practiced three hours a day, six days a week. And I was practicing in a very methodical way. My teacher, that was her big strength, that teacher that I had for those three years. And it was really about do 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes of sound exercises and 45 minutes of technical stuff. And then 30 mm -hmm. minutes of study and 15 minutes of... Uh, excerpts and then the rest on your repertoire but it really helped me to build my technique and build a so i think it's good to do that when you're building to have a certain type of uh, routine you know mm -hmm. exactly uh what else we got here what i saw something very good um what can you do when you have to play fast passages and can't find time to breathe hmm well, it depends. Sometimes you can uh, find a place where there's where there's a Sometimes you can find a place where there's a little um cadence, you know where your your phrase ends, where the composer put a uh, you know, like a a punctuation and then you can take more time and breathe it depends if you have other instruments with you or not if there's a piano part check the piano part check where the piano doesn't play and then sometimes you can take a little bit of time and do it musically uh, other times if you're alone then you can be the master of time and just add a little something here and then take it back elsewhere uh, it's a, b a lot about analyzing the piece um, some people do um, uh, circular breathing some people do circular breathing and um, that can help for that I don't master circular breathing so usually I try to figure out something else when I have a long part to play uh, usually what I do if I have to have a lot of air is I empty my lungs completely before I take a big breath and then I try to do the whole thing um, but usually there's places where you can breathe in. Let's say you all have 16 no 16th notes. Sometimes you can also just take off one 16th note, like the second of the group of four, take it off and breathe there. That can work. So that's, uh, I, help, I hope this helps. But, you know, um, try to analyze the piece, listen to versions and see where other flutists breathe. It, it might give you ideas. And sometimes we feel that we have to play like a, with the metronome, but we don't. Sometimes we have time to wait and take a, our time to breathe and then go on. So, um, flute rhapsody, as I said, my old teacher so oh, did yeah. okay. Anyone? Mm. How far did you go down? <laughs> I don't know. I just finished the uh, question. Tips for tonguing. When I play really short notes, my lips are moving and do this. My so oh, you moved it. I don't see Sorry. anymore. Oh. Uh, One or two more questions and then we'll so call it a show. I lost it. What was the a staccato too much movement and okay. the sound does something I, I lost it there yeah Flo wants to know okay. how do you have any got any tips for tonguing when I play really short notes staccato my lips are moving and due to this my sound gets worse I don't have this problem with playing legato okay. or non legato so when you play a staccato it's probably that yeah you're moving too much mm -hmm. um so you know why it's happening. You're saying you're moving too much. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just that. Um, try to think of your face, like your embouchure, as a mask. You know, it's it's staying steady. <laughs> Keep your lips, you know, like a mask, and then <laughs> you don't need to move. Maybe your flute is not is not um, pushing enough against your chin you don't want to push too much and hurt your jaw mm -hmm. but if you don't push enough then you don't have stability so you need to it needs to be there enough that if someone you know if i have my flute here and if someone's taking a finger and trying to push it away mm -hmm. it's not easy mm -hmm. like it's not just poof, falling off you know mm -hmm. so it needs to be stable there that might be it mm -hmm. and then try to 
do this. Just put a finger, go in front of a mirror and go and that you don't see any movement. Right, right, right. And right. then do it with your flute. Yeah. So those two things, practice to keep it as a mask and not move mm-hmm. while you do and also um, maybe put your flute a little bit more stable on your chin. Hi, oh. thanks, Audio of Ascension. That's uh, wow, that's our so friend. Much. It's Roxanne. It's <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> what makes my progress better is focusing on the journey with the flute, not the outcome. Seems to take of the pressure to achieve the achievement and noticing during the journey. Yeah, of course. Yeah, makes uh, good sense. I saw a question just before I left. I saw uh, what pieces do you recommend for grade six? Like, I, I assume it's grade six RCM. Um, a lot of like the box sonatas, all the box sonatas are around grade six and eight, and they're super fun to play. I don't know. And handle sonatas. I heart the grade six pieces. I don't know, but I, I know that those some of those sonatas are in there, and those are fun sonatas to you learn. Get little, you get cool baroque concertos too yeah. in those types of levels sure and the baroque concertos there's a lot of nice ones. oh my gosh like it's so nice Blavet so true and a lot of vivaldi ones are super nice and mm-hmm. um yeah yeah you know and i think oh, Blavet, that's yeah b-l-a-v-e-t yeah, Blavet, those are all available yeah, online and quants. oh yeah quants a lot of quants quants are fun and uh yeah those concertos can be cool concertos and sonatas i thought you meant the sonatas but yeah the concertos are no, so good yeah, the concertos and stamets stamets, stamets concerto. Good. yeah and then i-t-z i think yeah. i think at that point you can start playing some of the french book you yep. know some of the totally Fauré, fantasy and all yeah. those things. maybe it's a bit higher i'm not sure not sure because yeah, i don't that's know that's a bit uh, yeah but There's like the so french book the french book uh, is pretty much like if you can do the french book that's like what a lot of test pieces were like a half century ago you know and still are but i mean that's when uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. those were like test pieces uh, the test pieces for the concours at the paris concert yeah at the finish school yeah exactly uh one or two more questions but again thank you odyssey of ascension thank that's amazing so much. It gave us a, a, a lie so uh, super t- super chat uh, here on youtube so that's really awesome thanks so much yeah. we love her very much she's very very nice to the channel and to a great uh, budding flutist for yeah. sure great student totally too. great student yeah she's part of the studio the flute studio which is really great uh one more question i think i saw something um it was very interesting uh but if anybody has more questions be sure if we miss them leave them in the comments in the video uh so we can get back to them on the next video the you next know or if we yeah. make a, we might make a new video like i saw a video i saw a question about scales but we're make, we made a scale video that we're going to show all the scales, oh, yeah. you know, all the 12 major and minor scales and how they look and via scale and via fingers and fingerings all like a playthrough, right? Yeah, I'm going to play them yeah. slowly and like it's going to be on the Yeah, screen. on the screen and everything. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be really, I'll really cool. I'll play them slowly because sometimes you have videos that go super fast and like... Mm-hmm. It's not helpful for someone who's learning their scales for the first time oh, to yeah, hear them totally. so fast. But if you have our our uh, method, everything in the method, including the scales, I recorded them yes, slowly, that's right. so that can also be helpful. That can help a lot. And it's not all the scales because I, you know, mm-hmm. you learn a few there and then mm-hmm. more later. You know, you don't have to learn all your scales at totally. once. Totally. Yeah. And if you have questions even after watching the show live, or if you're listening to it on podcast, like I said leave us questions down in the video uh, on youtube and we'll be able to uh, get to those as fast as we can Ella, ian kleiner wants to know why uh is almost every famous flutist french paud rampal moise Tafanel, dufour gobert paud swiss and french i think i think he's swiss he's I half think and half i think right swiss yeah swiss yeah but yeah, all those but other people, like yes, French, Swiss. French, that <laughs> region, yeah, Dufour, Go- uh, Gobert, yeah. yeah, all very different types of flutists too. Like and there's a big tradition of uh, Paris Conservatory. Oh flutists. yeah, lineage, yeah. That they, yeah. a lot of them come from that lineage, basically. And also all of them the there. dad of Rampal, he was a great. That's right. Teacher. Great teacher. He was teaching in Marseille, which is in the south of right. France, and um, he. Even during the World War, the Germans wanted to have lessons with him. You know, yeah, there were yeah. German flutists. Uh, he yeah. was like the teacher. The teacher, yeah. When you look, he taught so many great flutists, and then he taught his son as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, like there's been. Why is it? You know, I don't know. Some people say why that the it language was, yeah. and tonguing, but I don't I really think language, believe in that. Do I think, think no, so? I don't think language. I think it was. I, to be honest, I think it was just 
location and time. I think the rest of the planet wasn't looking at the flute, and a lot of repertoire was being written in Germany and France. A lot of stuff that everyone was listening to in 1880s, 1890s, 1900s. Everybody was getting it from France. Like, that's what it was. So Maybe sometimes you need, like... For flute, I mean. A couple of very good teachers, too, and then you make... You have those people with a lot of... um, of um, talent yeah and they get to that teacher and it's yeah. just this and like american school didn't really start until like george barrer but george barrer i if i'm not mistaken was from that schooling as well but yeah. came there came to new york in that, that sounds area. french yeah barrer yeah. of course and but he was in Ju- no he was manhattan school or whatever whoever whatever yeah, the yeah. first school I was there i think i, I saw york. a book about him yeah there's a barrer book yeah um but there's a lot of cool books about each one of them, like the Ron Paul doc, doc the, the Ron Paul biography is very good uh, to kind of give an outlook on the flute. Um, there's other ones too. Paul Horn's a really good book too, and he comes from more American style, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's and even um, Eric Dolphy, he's a flutist, and uh, but he studied with the Italians because there was a lot of Italian flutists. There's a lot of famous Italian flutists. Yeah, Gazzaloni. Ita- and Gazzaloni. Yeah, he, he studied with Dol- Dolphy. Studied with him, and uh, a lot of like. Um, Boulez's work comes from a lot of Italian flute works. I mean, comes from like Italian uh, Galzoni. I think he wrote those pieces for him. Yeah. So, but I think now there's different schoolings. You have like with the world opening, like sure. you have a lot of like my teachers studied in France and Switzerland a lot, mm-hmm. and but now you kind of have it more everywhere because mm-hmm. those teachers came back where they came from, you know, from their home country and then taught in that way and yeah. you get yeah you can get that uh interesting mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but there's great flutist from yeah. different countries totally too. exactly maybe there's a part of um of uh marketing too maybe that makes it that some flutists mm-hmm. get more known than others totally for whatever s- whatever sake, reasons, yeah whatever I reason don't know. Um, because there's always a whole entire powerhouse behind it pushing. It's also yeah, like there's know. way more yeah. women learning the flute, yep. but then in yep. the high um, soloist, yeah. there's way more men. Mm-hmm. If you call there it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Has mm-hmm. to be a, like there's some like statistically, it's pretty mm-hmm. improbable. Yeah, but there's a lot of great flutists like uh, as well, like. Uh, there's a lot of great American flutists. Uh, there's a jazz flutist, I think, Hubert Laws. He's a uh, comes from the American school, which is like Julius Baker and all those things, which is really coming from a more Germ- German flutists and stuff like yeah. that. But and now we hear more about women yep. in the flute world totally. than we used yeah. to. But also like, yeah, you know, have like Alexa. Still, we worked with her. She's amazing. She's from New Zealand. She's from New Zealand. You yeah, know, but like she studied there and also studied in she different studied places too. She studied a lot too. in the United States. Yeah, too. traveled a lot, so a lot of yeah. American. But she doesn't sound like either. She doesn't sound like anyone, anyone else. else. No, she doesn't <laughs> sound like any flutist I've ever heard in my life. She's just a uh, very like her, smart, uh, yeah. and she just has her. Her and that flutist that passed away a while ago that did that album with Papia Zola. Like she sounded oh like God. she sounded like no flutist that I've ever heard. That lady was she's so <laughs> creative the way yeah. she played. Um, Cecile something. C- Cecile Daru. Cecile Daru, probably one of the best I recordings. I just found like, a recording of yeah. her at the store. Where I yeah, just yeah. wanted a recording of the tango yeah. etudes. She is... Doesn't, yeah, yeah, just no no limit. So mm-hmm. it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, All totally. the ideas that she gets and it's always in mm-hmm. taste, but yeah, very Yeah, it's always creative. in taste. Yeah, and always in taste. It's crazy. I was like, what an amazing How? flutist. And I thought I should go and take lessons with her. And then I realized she was dead. She, she died got, like, young. She like cancer and yeah. died super young. Yeah. I we'll have to yeah, share that information because that's a great. I, if there's a top ten list of albums to listen to for flutists, that's oh, probably yeah. number one. But like her, we didn't hear that much about her. Like nope, she had never an heard okay of her before. Career, but she should have had an amazing career. Mm-hmm, she mm-hmm. should have been as known as any of those. Yeah, other any instrumentalist, any instrumentalist. We hear in more fact, about. I thought because like I could have seen her play with the Yo Yo Ma and his groups. You know what I mean? Because totally. like everyone's so creative, they're all so creative. You know? Yeah. Super creative. So. Like yeah. why some people and not others? There's a lot of yeah, uh, just life. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. <laughs> no, exactly. Hazard. Yeah, How do you say hazard. I don't like, know. Uh, I don't know. Hazard. <laughs> hazard. No. No. <laughs> uh, okay. One final question, everyone, and then this will be the end for this one. Uh, but uh, so many great questions. Please, like I said, leave a question. If you have one and forgotten one, come back and 
give it a like and leave us a question. So, uh, should I study in so, France yeah, or in Germany? Yeah, should I study Germany? in France or in Germany? I Germany would love is amazing. To have this, uh, <laughs> These options, this, yeah. Yeah. Germany is amazing for classical music, but I guess France is a flute country. It's not a flute country. It's just it's not any. I honestly think it isn't anymore. If it ever was, but I think you know. I don't know. My you advice should find is, a uh, teacher that you love. You like, yeah. Yeah. I've heard good things in even, Germany. Uh, even Switzerland at the there there used to be um oh yeah in switzerland geez, uh, in geneva yeah. conservatory it was uh what's his name uh, maxence larieux yeah, which is yeah, one of yeah. the best flutists mm-hmm. in the world like yeah but also it's who do you feel comfortable with because if yeah, you're he still learn, teaches that you want to learn smokes. i think he does, oh yeah, yeah. i met him I in new york him yeah in, uh, in um in master class master and class. i also had a lobster with him because mm-hmm. he was friends with my teacher and we mm-hmm. all went out very nice man yeah yeah so I yeah don't know. you know like i think they have their different styles uh, you know and things change obviously through the times but germany have a lot of baroque like music if you and stuff can like that. take if they teach in a summer program or something the people that y- are on your mm-hmm, list mm-hmm. and you can go and study with mm-hmm. them just see how they work or if you can take i don't know if you're able to take an online lesson with the person to see how you feel i don't know like or ask around people mm-hmm. who studied with them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't know because i think it's more about that sure i think so too because you can have a very good teacher in germany and a bad teacher in france and vice versa it's not uh the country doesn't make people good no or bad. no exactly <laughs> it's not the country yeah and like every town in g- every you can have city in germany has a different anywhere. thing anywhere yeah and sometimes you find pearls in places that don't even have a great name yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and there's a lot of different types of alternative there's a, uh, even an alternative school in vienna i think that's for music really for that for people just to play to give them opportunities all the time i forget what it's called but uh, there's a place there like you, you know you can go anywhere like and maybe find places that you can also maybe have lessons with other teachers as well let's see if, like i said find out what the teachers you know uh way of teaching is and how uh, are they or free and doing stuff if, if you're in the region mm-hmm. and you can some teachers they have like a weekly class that they do with their whole yeah class you know mm-hmm. that is uh maybe open like you can ask if you can come and watch yeah totally like it's good to see how the person teaches a little mm-hmm. bit before uh, but like when i did my masters i didn't really know my teacher and he was amazing Mm-hmm. sometimes it's just you have to trust life i guess yeah, i exactly. learned so much from him and mm-hmm. he was amazing and sure i didn't necessarily learn from the people that had the best reputation right the people i learned the most from were not necessarily the yeah. because you have people that are very ambitious mm-hmm. and sometimes they're ambitious and they're very good sometimes mm-hmm. you have people that are not that ambitious but are amb- very right. good you can have all types of combinations mm-hmm. so the reputation is not always the only thing, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. Oh, who's your favorite flute as well? I mentioned that that, that lady. She's pretty great. But also, Cecil Daru, Cecil Daru yeah. and also that other guy who used to teach at the domain that's, uh, who died. Uh, Michel de Bost. No, the other guy. Oh, Alain Marion. Alain Marion, Alain Marion is very Marion good too. Amazing. Those are all great flutists. Uh, yeah. Alain Marion is amazing. Yeah. Alexa still, she really Alexa still is really me. good too. When yeah, I live, heard her in person. Great live sound. Great live sound for sure. I was like, yeah. I remember uh, when she came the first time in Montreal and she played in concert and my first flute teacher was there and he was hypnotized. He mm-hmm. was looking at her like, who is this person? Yeah, came I've like never an alien, heard. like an alien. Oh, yeah. He was looking planet. at her like that was so cute. And then he was like, she how played her does flute she differently too? like her flutes completely forward and yeah, all the keys are like, facing forward. You and have to explain to me stuff. like the way she holds her flute and yeah. then. Her pianos, I'm, like yeah, this mm. is the softest pianos I've heard on a flute, you know, yeah. and all those things. He was like, she has she so makes many cool tricks that just get the right result. Yeah, goes the against a lot of things. Range is yeah. amazing. I was really impressed yeah, with her. Totally. And I've heard a lot of flutists yeah. live, so <laughs> there we go. Cool. Thanks everyone so much. Thanks for the uh, super chat by Ascension of Odyssey, and also, like I said, leave a review over an Apple Podcast too. That helps us so much. Go to Apple Podcasts in your region. Leave us a review um that goes a long way as well and uh yeah we'll definitely have some more new videos coming up soon we like i said took a break uh, this month but we have videos coming up and they'll be all coming uh flute review of reviewing people's playing uh some concerto stuff also celebrating 100,000 subscribers because that's going to be coming up in the next month or two uh also recommend uh this podcast or our channel to a friend and a flute friend or a musical friend Uh, we love uh, having more people in the community we're about to hit 100k and that's always a lot of fun 
so yeah are we gonna get a little thing yeah we're gonna get a plaque oh. and we're gonna put it right over there and yeah. uh yeah that's gonna be really really amazing and then we have to wait until a million to get another one <laughs> <laughs> e. <laughs> e is the right one so yeah um, hi everyone thanks everybody for being in the show uh, being at the live show uh and see you guys uh, next month see ya bye thanks <laughs>